If you remember from the end of the last video, I began questioning my Jehovah's Witness friend about Rutherford's two-class system. Listen to her masterful work of twisting scripture as she basically tries to use the value I place on context to deflect from Rutherford and his doctrine. She points to the use of the word day in Genesis 2, which is really obviously used there as a period of time, not a literal day. Otherwise, it would directly contradict the sentences that came immediately before it, and she knows it. But she tries to misapply it as an excuse for Rutherford's claim that the number 144,000 in Revelation is a literal number, while maintaining that the 12,000 virgin men from the 12 tribes of Israel are symbolic. I have to admit, I was not ready for this tactic at all. Well, here's the problem, though. There, there's a huge contextual problem with what Rutherford did there. He took a literal number and applied it over a certain group of people that he claimed, and no one has ever believed that, except for him and then his followers, and then they've continued to believe that through it, it, the last hundred years. It surprises me, and, and can you explain why some people will take... Um, Well, most religions will take the, the Genesis account of seven of six days of, of building the earth, of building heaven and earth, and take that literally, and then go to the last book of the Bible and not take 104 literally. Mm, okay, that's a good question, yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess I could ask a question back too, but, so, but first, so Genesis is historical narrative, right? That's the genre. It's telling us what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the book of Revelation is apocalyptic literature, which is full of symbolism. And I think you would agree with me on that, right? Like you believe the 12 tribes mentioned are symbolic, you know, and that they're virgins, mm -hmm. Jewish men, all that kind of thing. You believe that's yeah. symbolic, right? So you would agree that that's, that's a symbolic Um, genre. That's, that's, that's a revelation, yeah. Yeah, so revelation is symbolic. Genesis is literal historical narrative. So well, then, then turn, uh, turn to, uh, in Genesis, open up your Bible in Genesis. Just, just hang on a moment. I just want to let the dog out again. Oh, sure. He's, see, I, have, I live in a suite, and he goes into the... Uh, back and forth into the main house. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. I was going to say, small bladder? <laughs> <laughs> There. He wants to come in and investigate my place because I would give him a treat. Oh. <laughs> and then he, when he eats the treat, then he wants to go back out again. <laughs> He's going to Grandma's house. <laughs> so I'm oh, constantly looking after him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, in the, in, the, in the book of Genesis, it talks about the six days. And then in chapter two, <coughs> in verse four, mm -hmm. can I read that one? Chapter two, verse four. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God or Yahweh made the earth and the heavens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there it speaks of all creation as being in one day, the day. Well, six days. No, it doesn't say six days, it says the day. Okay, okay, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. So is that a contradiction? Oh, okay. Well, um, how are they using the term in there? The day meaning the time of? Well, we I don't have to. Sort of like when we say back in the day? I don't have to read anything in there. I can, I can judge, I can judge uh, what it means right. by the fact mm. that it talks about six days in the in Genesis 1 mm -hmm. but in verse in chapter 2 it talks about the day one day that the earth was created well. a day <clears throat> well it says the day the, not... the, the day but then when you you can go to uh, uh, I 
think it's second, yeah, second Peter. Then it it talks about uh, uh, a day to Jehovah is like a thousand a- years. Yeah, but that doesn't really relate at all to Genesis two. So, That's two different contexts, isn't it? So time to time, <coughs> obviously, to Jehovah is not like twenty four hours. And if I'm, if you're interpreting that, then that's a small interpretation. It's a narrow interpretation, isn't it? I'm not sure what that has to do with making 144,000 a, a literal number. Well, that's what I say. You have to, you have to uh, distinguish what is what as a num what is a number that can that can be used literally, and what is a figurative number. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly, and, and so uh, that's two different it genres. Talks, it talks about, and in Romans, it talks about the revealing of the sons of God. So what makes you believe that, like, what is it about Joseph Rutherford that makes you believe that his interpretation of a literal 144,000 is true? Because when he, uh, when he started looking into the Bible, he got a uh, the Al- Allegheny, Pennsylvania, was a very religious c- community, and uh, he got a, a lot of people, to, uh, people together who were interested in the Bible, and they decided to study the Bible and take it uh, verse by verse and compare scriptures to see what the meanings were and if there was continuity and if there was contradiction. So one scripture had to support another scripture, and if it didn't, they investigated it further, and they would come up with a consensus, and they were of different faiths, and they came up after much, much discussion that they found that all their faiths were not teaching the truth. If you've been listening through this series, you've heard her make this exact same claim when defending Charles Taze Russell. In fact, it's almost word for word. And claiming that he, in this case Rutherford instead of Russell, was studying diligently with people from a variety of different beliefs. Though previously, when saying this about Russell, she liked to make a point of saying some of them were Mormons. I'm not really sure where she got that from or why she insisted on saying it, because even the Watchtower's own literature doesn't say it. I probably could have called her out on what she did here, but I chose instead to try and continue questioning the authority of Rutherford himself. So a lot of people have said that. What makes him right and them wrong? What makes him I'm sorry? A lot of people have said the same thing. They've made that same claim. But he didn't make that claim. It was the whole bunch that got together, and they okay. were of different faiths. And but there are other people that have done the same thing, though. Not so, as extensively, no. Not oh, that yeah. I've known. Sure. Yeah, you look at the. the it's usually Adventists. one person who who uh, is powerful enough and uh, uh, makes makes an makes us an assumption, and then it leads leads the church off into another direction. Mm-hmm. And it's usually like one person that does that. Joseph Smith. That's just one. There's lots. Ellen yeah, there's, White, there, there's lots. Yeah, Mary who, Baker Eddy. Who, who've uh-huh. done that. But I say, as I say, it's not a bunch of people of, a diff- of different faiths that have got together and have come up with the same conclusion. Yeah. Well, that's what the, the Adventists did. Pardon me? That's what the Adventists did. Some of uh, some of the uh, some of the the uh, students that were together with Rutherford were Adventists. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there was the Adventists that. And then they and they mm-hmm. came up with then yes and then they uh, they started printing their uh, their like the one Adventist he uh, uh, his name was Storm he uh, then started printing a. Uh, and uh, a little uh, a magazine like mm-hmm. and, uh, and then him and brother brother Rutherford got together mm-hmm. oh you mean like with Russell like when they started the watchtower eventually and then and then when they got a consensus when they all got a consensus then uh, uh, St- 
Stores and uh, Rutherford and um, a few other ones. They had, they had money. They were businessmen, and they uh, used their resources to uh, publish little uh, little tracks and little magazines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm still not seeing what what made them right and all the other people making those same claims wrong. Well, because, as, as I said, they were of different faiths that came up with one consensus. So that's what made it okay that they are di- people of different religions came that's, together? That's, credi- that's credibility. That's your credibility. Okay. okay. Well, I think that's anybody's credibility. Okay. Um, okay. Well, then maybe, if do you mind talking for a bit longer? Have you got... Oh, yeah, no, I'm okay. enjoying this. Okay, good. Me too. Because I'm not doing anything. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> that helps. <laughs> um, okay, so... Then I guess I was wondering about, um, so the, the Watchtower, I've read on the website that it says things like that um, the Watchtower, um, Jesus chose them in 1919. Have you read that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what determines that he chose them? What was, well, it, what was it about what, about their teachings that they were right? Well, what did, what what makes them feel, that, uh, and makes all of us feel that 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 was right, was because uh, the the Bible does speak of an in, of an in uh, inspection. It speaks uh, about you know uh, Jesus and, and uh, Jehovah coming to inspect, and it talks. In Malachi about that talks in Isaiah about that talks in uh, Jeremiah Zechariah about that mm. and uh, that happened in uh, in, 19, in 1914 at the end of 1914 the witnesses were uh, the eight witness uh, leading witnesses there of that Watchtower organization. Were put in prison. Were put in prison. They were the witnesses were banned in the states and were put in prison, and they were sentenced between them for forty years in jail. Mm-hmm. Mm. Where they were charged with sedition. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, and that's what the early Christians were charged with. And, but uh, they were charged for sedition because they printed the finished mystery and it spoke against the war. Who, uh, who, the, uh, who are you referring to? Christians? To the early Christians? No, uh, Rutherford and, and the others that were put in jail. They were put in jail, uh, well, for, for sedition, yeah. They were, they, they weren't, because they weren't supporting the government, and they, that was anti-government. Well, yeah, that, yeah. They, that, and they said that was sedition. Yeah. There was nothing, um, there was nothing uh, that was sedition about it. They weren't against, if you were, to to sedition is against something, and mm. and witnesses we never have never in all the centuries ever spoken against a government. Really, never. This claim absolutely amazed me. I had previously mentioned that I have a copy of the finished mystery, but she probably forgot about that. I've read those ten pages that speak so forcefully against a number of countries, including the USA and England and I would have been more than happy to open my copy and read her some of the things they wrote, but I think she must have realized I was about to completely disprove her claim, so she very quickly switched to the they're just imperfect men learning as they go argument. Yet another masterful deflection away from the point. I know some people have commented below these videos that they think she's stupid. I think this is one of the many examples of how smart she actually is. The key is that even very smart, creative, thoughtful people can be brainwashed, given the right circumstances. And that should give us all pause and reason to humbly thank the Lord that we're not where she is, trapped in those horrible, evil mind games that they inflict on her. Okay, well that's interesting because um, I actually have a copy of The Finished Mystery. I just happened to find it at an old used book sale years ago. I didn't even know what it was when I got it. 
Um, and it's a it's a first print or first edition. Well, uh, yeah, let's uh, you know I can I can believe it anything that was print that was printed there because that was not that was just a testing ground really. That was uh, sure things have changed since that mess since we don't follow that for that uh, that at all. That was just the uh, early stages of the, uh, finding out the truth. Well, uh, no, no, but I was just talking about specifically, it's so, so interesting when I looked into it a while ago, that um, there's 10 pages specifically in the Finnish mystery where they were criticizing uh, America, England, Russia, Germany, and some no, other I, countries. I can, yeah, they were very, they were very, uh, uh, what, like a very, very outspoken, mm-hmm. I was say very bold, very outspoken about, uh, yep. about what, uh, how they... Uh, they perceived that the world was in the power of the wicked one. Yep. Let's just listen one more time to the initial claim that she made, which I was refuting here. We never have never in all the centuries ever spoken against a government. Does it sound like she's defending her initial claim? It still fascinates me how she weaves this intricate web to get away from having to admit defeat on any point. At this point, she has basically flipped her argument to defend the Watchtower speaking against governments. It's all kind of crazy, because really, as a Christian, I don't think highly of world governments either. In fact, I can be pretty outspoken at times when I see the injustices and abuses governments often inflict, especially these days. So that's not even a point of disagreement. But it's not what we were talking about, is it? I've said before that I think she would have made a great politician with the way she wiggles out of ever admitting when she has contradicted herself or made a false statement. Exactly, yeah. And of course, that's just agreeing with the Bible, isn't it? Uh, yes and no, depending on how, how you're talking about it. But that, that wasn't really the point, though. Um, so that's so I understood that's let's, why... Let's, let's think the Bible is black and white. The whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. There it is. Oh yeah. If you and if you there, look yeah. at uh, when you look at the, at at the prophecy in Daniel, see. And what about that stone that is cut out of the mountain and destroys that statue? And that statue. It was representative of the governments down through the centuries. And in verse, in chapter 2 of verse 44 there it says, it says that that stone destroys all those governments. It, destro- it hits the feet and destroys those all those governments or that whole statue. So that would indicate that Christ's government is going to put an end to earthly governments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with that. They are under the power of the evil one. Well, I, I mean, you know, when just talking about the finished mystery, because sorry, when you, if you, met, <laughs> you get into that book, I love to talk about it because it's so interesting, and I just love having an old, um, an old. Oh, I have a bunch of old books from different religions and stuff, but um, yeah, when you see like, but this one, um, they specifically yeah, those ten see, pages. Uh, what I what the, what is in the finished mystery. It's not what witnesses believe now. No. Because they have a much brighter, the light has gotten much brighter, and they have seen the truth of what so, was started out. And those were the beginnings of those truths. So, so what those, they were teaching and what then... in the finished mystery is just clarified. <laughs> but There's what they no were, change in belief. So they were producing that book in 1919 still, and, I mean, I, I've i read so many things in here that for sure you guys don't believe anymore. Um, I just said that. Yeah, So, but, but you're saying that Jehovah chose them while they were teaching those things. 